Well, I've been meaning to call and stuff, so. All right. All right. We can just kind of, we can kind of just look at each other. So, okay. like I said, so are you ready? You kind of know how you can answer everything. You need a second? Sure. No, go ahead. Okay, you ready to go? Okay, we'll do this in three, two, one. Dave Santa Steven here for AroundTrinidad.com and AroundSoCo.com. We're here with the outgoing and retiring Trinidad State Junior College president. Doctor, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Great. It's good um, good that, hours of this with you, David. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit. Uh, first off, give us a background on where you're from, where you grew up, where you went to school. Okay. I grew up in southern Idaho, a little town called Rupert, which is where the Snake River makes its bottom loop down through the state of Idaho mm -hmm. on a farm, and then went to... Uh, Oklahoma Christian College, University of Oklahoma, and then Kansas State University. I became bachelor's, master's, and, and PhD along the way. And so I've been a biology faculty member, I've been a high school teacher, uh, college dean, uh, college president, and my, most of my experience was at Laramie County Community College up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where I was president for 14 years. Then retired in 06, mm -hmm. and then came out of retirement for this job. Tell us a little bit about your family. Okay, my wife and I were uh, we're celebrating our 48th uh, anniversary today. Oh, today! Yeah, yeah. That's great. Great. Today. So that's 48 years. That's a pretty good run. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, we've been together a long time, uh, soulmates, and uh, we have three children. All of them live in Colorado, and there's five grandchildren from our two daughters. What about your interests? What are your interests? What do you like to do in your off time when you're not working? Okay, well, when I'm working, it seems like there's no off time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but during retirement, uh, up at our uh, it, Wyoming home is in the mountains, so there's a lot of outdoor stuff, hiking, uh, trail riding. We, I like running ATVs and going out with buddies and exploring the world like that. And then uh, we, I like to build things. I like to touch up and cook. And so that's become one of my passions is uh, cooking with my friends to see what all we can come up with and, uh, and having a potluck together and enjoying what comes out of our pots. What are some of the better things that you've done, the changes that you've made in places you've been that you're proud of over the years? Okay, well, uh, each of the institutions that I have led, some of them were branch campuses of, of other campuses, but they... They've added programs, uh, quality has improved, and enrollment has grown. And so the institutions have, have really significantly increased in size during that time. And I think that's important. If you're too small, uh, then the, the economy of scales are working against you, and it's hard to really offer a full set of programs for your students and a full set of uh, support services. So that's been sort of my, my strategies for a long time. And I was very, uh, I think you need to stay long enough if you're a permanent president. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, stay long enough to clean up the messes you might have made. <laughs> uh, too many people will come in, spend three years, take off, and uh, everything looks good on paper, but nothing was completed. And then there's problems of, of trying to pick up and clean up and so on. So I guess I'm, I'm a person that believes a a good leader stays a significant amount of time. And so uh, it went from four years at a branch campus to nine years to 14 years. What is one, before you got to Trinidad State, one memorable moment, a person, a student, a faculty member that you met that kind of inspired you to do some of the things, changes that you, that you needed to make or, you know, something, somebody that influenced you, inspired you? Well, I've been fortunate. I've had several good mentors. Mm -hmm. Probably one that had the biggest impact uh, was a colleague at Jamestown Community College in Western New York. And then he became my boss uh, when he assumed the presidency of the institution. And probably one thing that he told me that has stuck with me, and he says, never think you're not replaceable. <laughs> so don't get too big for your britches. Mm -hmm. so always, always strive for excellence. And, and uh, so he, he was just a very, very wise man and uh, had lots of little insights along the way. Another insight, uh, and this too shall pass. When things aren't looking so good, just hang in there because they will, they will pass. So he's had a significant impact. Unfortunately, he's been gone a long time, so I can't call him anymore. Is there a student, um, one student that told you something or did something that, that, uh, that made, maybe made you change the way you look at students or try to help students? 
Who? Well, I don't know. I'm getting, getting so old, I can't remember all of that. I, did, I remember one student that uh, he was, he'd been a diesel mechanic for years, was self-trained, and uh, he just couldn't work in the field anymore. His name was David, and David happened, I happened to run into him in the hall, and I said, how's it going, David? And he was lost, confused, didn't know where he was going. But this this man had a tremendous drive, and uh, I said, if you ever need to talk, come by the office. So he would stop in intermittently for a long time. So I watched him grow, mature, uh, get a degree in, in uh, IT, uh, instructional technology, and then computers. And then saw him come work for the college. And I, I, I learned from him, uh, uh, stick to it when you got a task before you. Uh, don't judge a person by the way they look. Mm -hmm. He didn't look like he was an IT guy mm -hmm. at all. Uh, you know, who would have thought that somebody bounced around all his years like he had was so blooming intelligent. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of innate intelligence. And so you just, you just, sometimes the students don't know they're teaching you something, but you are learning from, from them the way they carry themselves and how they attack life and so on. Who talked to you about coming out of retirement? And why did you choose Trinidad State to come here for this last year and try to make the difference here? Okay, I'm, I'm a member of something called the Registry for College and University Presidents. And it's an it's a organization that you are invited to be a part of if you meet certain, if you've had a good career. Mm -hmm. And uh, their whole job is to quickly place seasoned administrators into positions at colleges and universities. And uh, so they uh, helped out with the search, I think, at uh, CSU Pueblo. Mm -hmm. uh, the results were good. The Colorado Community College System heard about that, how that search went for an interim. And so uh, I and, three other, and two other people were uh, asked if we wanted to be candidates for this job. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, well, yeah. Trinidad, that's not too far from Wyoming. And I go through Trinidad all the time. And I've heard of it when I was at Laramie County Community College in Cheyenne. So uh, I applied and three of us interviewed and I was fortunate enough to get the job. So that was that's how I came to be here. And when you work for this company, you cannot be a candidate for the permanent job. Mm -hmm. Their whole niche is interims because they believe interims can do a better job if they're not angling for the job. What were you expecting? Uh, I, the, the, everybody was very candid, so I knew pretty well after the interview where Trinidad State was. Uh, enrollment declined for three years, uh, a student loan default rate that was relatively high. Uh, there's a, a focus visit from the accreditation group that we had a visit because we had some issues in our last accreditation mm -hmm. and that our nursing program did not make its accreditation on its try during the year before this. And so uh, I pretty well had my eyes wide open. And so my job was to, oh, and also there was a lot of conflict between our two campuses. That was another thing. And so since I had had branch campus experience, I think that helped, mm -hmm. helped me because I was a, a, a leader of two branch campuses and in the, my last job, we also had a branch campus in Laramie, Wyoming. So uh, I, eyes wide open, uh, found that uh, great people here at the college uh, really want the best for the institution are willing to work very, very hard and uh, they need to feel appreciated. And uh, I have one thing I've learned over the years, no mentor taught me this, no person is more important than anyone else. Okay, we all have different jobs. My, my job is the president. I have a particular set of responsibilities. Daryl, who uh, cleans this building, is equally important, and he has a set of responsibilities. And I think you can really lead well if you keep your ego in, mm -hmm. in and remember how important everybody is. Because I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I have to be the orchestra leader mm -hmm. of all these people that actually do it. Mm -hmm. And so the, the job of the leader is to try to bring people uh, to up to their maximum to help them feel empowered and to help them do a good job and to get stuff out of the way that might be hindering their job. So uh, 
it's been a good run. Uh, this is a great college, and I think it's got a great future ahead of it. What did you like about the college, and what things did you accomplish in the last year that you were here? Well, I like the fact, it, it's neat that it has two campuses, because it, it keeps the job from being boring. Uh, and part of the response we did to try to bring the two campuses into working together, to pulling together and so on, is that we didn't replace the vice president over there. Uh, we, I go over there and directly lead the Bats campus. Vice presidents do the same thing, and we consider ourselves the, the presidents and vice presidents of the whole institution, not just the Trinidad campus, and then there's this happens to be this branch uh, on the other side of the mountain. So we've done a lot to bring, and I, I'm going to say we a lot, because I don't accomplish anything. I just help everybody accomplish a lot. So we, uh, the two campuses are much more united. Uh, I think they both feel pride in being part of Trinidad State, what Trinidad State is all about. And uh, so that's been a big accomplishment is, you know, restoring pride, enhancing pride in the institution, and helping the campus feel, the college feels like it's got a future. And mm -hmm. it felt sort of uh, subdued when I got here, mm -hmm. that it, I think it's because it had been so busy trying to save money, and its enrollment was declining, that, uh, people were starting to use lose sight of what we're all about. So we did a lot of things, uh, laid and played strategies to help the college grow. New recruiters, uh, recruiter at each campus, new student life directors at, at both campuses, a big emphasis in student life. I'm, I'm a firm believer that students will be attracted and will stay at a college where uh, the quality of the teachers are excellent and it's fun and enjoyable to be there also. So we, we really worked hard on student life. Uh, there was a student life building in the middle of the resident halls that wasn't being used for student life anymore. Mm -hmm. So we moved massage therapy to a new space. They're happy because they got an expanded, beautiful space. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved uh, what was in there from gunsmithing over into a, into the Mullen building and we have some additional space. So gunsmithing got additional space. So. Uh, we did a, a move there to help student life that made two other programs very happy, so that, that was good to see that happen. And uh, we also felt like we needed a much stronger presence in our public relations and uh, in, our, in our quality of our materials and so on, so we added staff in, in the area of PR also. So tell the story, uh, go out and get recruiters, uh, have something to be able to attract students, a brand new scholarship program that's called First Choice Scholarships, mm -hmm. and uh, there, there's something in there for everybody if they want to come to TSJC. But the biggest scholarships are for the students that do well in, in high school. So again, tr trying to encourage students in high school do well, there can be a benefit at the end, and then trying to get that B through A student to attend TSJC. They're the ones that influence students in high schools and hopefully we'll get their friends also attending, even if they aren't as good a, good a student. Uh, so we, you know, we've just done a lot of stuff like that to try to build the base to get the enrollment decline turned around. One thing we've tried to do is to look at ourselves no longer as a local college. Uh, we serve a local community, and that's our, our emphasis, but we're, we're starting to see ourselves as a regional and national college. And so that will be interesting to see how that strategy plays itself out. So that's sort of a nutshell about all of what we've done this year. And, um, Trinidad, what did you expect coming to the town and being the president? Um, what are some good qualities of the community down here? Well, I really didn't. You know, our experience of Trinidad was stopping at Dairy Queen, uh, stopping at Walmart to meet some friends, uh, maybe eating at Wendy's out there on that end of town and then going through. So, uh, And my impression was 10 years of construction of I-25 through, <laughs> through the city and so on. So I expected Trinidad to be sort of like Las Vegas, New Mexico. And I'm not putting Las Vegas down, but it is not a Trinidad. Uh -huh. uh, so Kay and I were ple present, pleasantly surprised when we actually did drive around through the town. It's uh, you know, it's a sort of a 
an old tattered gal right now, but I think she'll come back in, in big glory over time. Mm -hmm. But the, the architecture is, is incredible. We, we love the architecture. Um, mm -hmm. Our thoughts were if we hadn't already sort of played our retirement strategy mm -hmm. and we're too old to develop a new strategy, mm -hmm. that Trinidad might have been on on the radar because we, I like fixing up old buildings and old houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think Trinidad, if it plays its cards right, can be a place for young professionals to come that are lone wolves. Mm -hmm. So the, the community needs to make sure it's got the right kind of infrastructure for telecommunications. And also for the, the not the rich retiree, but the somewhat affluent middle class retiree. So. Healthcare, focus on healthcare is going to be important. But it, you know, the arts that's emerging, uh, having a college in town. So there's, I think there, if all the players stay on the same play sheet, uh, I think Trinidad can have a new future. Energy is never going to come back. It'll be here some, but mm -hmm. the glorious days of energy uh, extraction are gone. Mm -hmm. Just that's just the reality. Um, I've noticed over the past year that you made sure that you had representatives of college out in the community at nonprofit events, at uh, elected board meetings. What was the purpose of that? Uh, my philosophy is that a community college, even though that's not in our name, we really are a community college, uh, is the community's college mm -hmm. and it needs to be in the center of everything going on. It ought to be the center of uh, economic development, it ought to be in the center of cultural uh, cultural life in the community. And so we, that's been a big stress. And uh, we were charging for lots of nonprofits to come use the Pioneer Room. I said, no, that, we'll make that available to the community at no cost. It's, it's just part of our, our being part of our community. So yeah, I'm a firm believer that the distance between the gown and the town ought to be very, very short. You said earlier, so I'm glad we were noticed. <laughs> you said earlier that you liked outdoor uh, gaming, fishing. Did you get to uh, visit any of our lakes, fish at any of the local lakes? Didn't like have time. That? Did visit we, them. Did visit them? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Will you be coming back? Probably so. Yeah, the state park is, is a beautiful place to hike. I've checked out Monument Lake Camping. And so, yeah, very well could, could do that. Because I'm going to be interested. In, you know, I've... Uh -huh. I've uh, invested in this college and this college has invested in me so now I have an interest in seeing what happens. So and you will so you'll be coming back to visit from time to time. I'm okay. sure you've made some, some good friends here uh, over the past year. Mm -hmm. um, any final thoughts? Anything you'd like to say to the students, the faculty here at Trinidad State or the people here in the community in Trinidad Los Angeles County? Well I think uh, it's going to be very important for the college, uh, the employees, the students, community to accept and embrace uh, Dr. Simone, mm -hmm. help her feel welcome, help her be involved. Uh, I have not known her really well, but we were colleagues at, at different colleges in Wyoming, and so I, she's, she's a very, very solid player, mm -hmm. and uh, I, she's committed to the long term, so I think, I hope everybody will embrace her like they did me and help her be a success, because if she's successful, everybody else is successful. Final question. Is Trinidad State better off uh, after you left than when you came? <laughs> I think so. Uh -huh. I think our future is more stable now uh -huh. than it was. Okay. Yeah. Most people like to say they hope when they leave a place it's better off after they've left than when they've got there. Right. That's the question. Sometimes. Sure. Yeah. And that's. I guess time will tell. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I think we've laid a foundation. Uh, these growth strategies take two to three years to really develop. Mm -hmm. And so I, I hope that Dr. Simone will continue those, enhance those, because uh, it's, it's worked everywhere I've been, and every college that I've observed, it's always worked. So, uh, you know, instead of a problem that the resident halls aren't full, it's an opportunity. Uh, we will help attract students here and help fill those resident halls. I guess one of the things I'm proud of over at the other campus is that uh, my hopes were that we could at least lay a little bit of a foundation for a new campus because it's very, very crowded. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that we would uh, be able to get the land donated, but we, we were able to accomplish that. And uh, hopefully then the, the money can be raised by 
by Dr. Simone and Tony DeAngelis and with the help of a lot of good people to build a new campus over there. So at least a foundation was laid. They didn't have 15 acres before I got here. Now they've got 15 plus the three they already had. Okay, well, Doctor, thank you once again. So okay, me, thank you thank for you. your service. Thank you. Thanks for all you do to help tell the good word about the, co the college and the community. Thank you, and, and uh, happy retirement. Buddy. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm telling people I'm going to become the re-retired man. <laughs> and I hope to do that for a while. Now, this group I'm with had another opportunity for me to apply for uh, immediately after this one, and I said, no. I, you, you want to re-retire? I want to re-retire. Yeah. I didn't say it, but I thought, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted a full-time job, I would apply for a full-time job. Well, once again, thank you. Okay, and, thank you. And happy retirement to you. Okay, thank the you. Community thanks you for coming in and helping try to bring this college and moving forward into the future. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. And best wishes to you, too. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Super. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.